Farm Bureau, the radio play-by-play voice of the Atlanta Braves. Ben Ingram joins us right now. Benjamin, I I, kind of don't feel sorry for you. You know, I know there was some uncertainty. There was some up in the air during the offseason. But when it's all said and done, you got an extra couple of weeks of vacation. You're still going to call 162 ball games. It doesn't suck to be you. No, I don't think anybody should be feeling sorry for me. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. And and you're right. I, I think the biggest concern was losing games. And once they decided to keep the integrity of 162, I looked at it the same way you just laid it out there. I got a full um, off season's worth of vacation time. It's the same as, as a team that doesn't make the postseason normally gets. And we won a <laughs> ring last year. So all good's in our world. All good all the way around. Obviously, the big story of the offseason, what's going to happen with Freddie Freeman? The uh, the Braves answered that question when they bring Matt Olson in. Um, b- because of who Matt Olson is and where he is from, now I know ultimately he's got to produce. Does that soften the blow of losing Freddie Freeman for Braves fans a little bit? Uh, maybe people in Atlanta. I think people that are in Atlanta or you know around the Atlanta area probably know who he is. Uh, to me... Prior to this trade, Matt Olson was just a name and some numbers. I mean, I knew he existed. I knew he put up big numbers. I knew he was an all-star last year. If he walked in the room, I wouldn't have recognized him. Um, I, don't, I don't know what he looked like because we never we never see DAs. Yeah. Um, it's not like we got this guy from another National League team. We got him from an AL team out west. I remember there was a game in 2017 where we had an interleague series in Oakland. I was on the call with Don. And Mike fulton took a no-hitter into the ninth inning of a ball game, and Matt Olson broke it up with a, a home run. That's the only thing I really knew about Matt Olson um, outside of some, some numbers. They had good years. But uh, upon further review, just looking at uh, what he's done in his career and how old he is and, and how good he can be, I think that softens the blow in a big way, just knowing that he could step in and be a really big piece for you in 2022. And you needed that because you, you just lost your biggest piece, in my opinion, in Freddie Freeman. And, and Freddie Freeman will always be loved by Braves fans. It, did this make sense, though? I mean, I, I know there's an economic piece to it that had to be worked out, and the Braves decide, okay, this this is what we think is right going forward. But when you get a guy that is is younger and appears to be talented and you can get him for less money in the short term and the long term, was it a move that actually made sense or – I don't know. Mike would have rolled the dice with Freddie Freeman for a little while longer. Well, here's the thing with baseball. When we get nostalgic and we let our, our fandom show, it, it's easy to, to take a player like Freddie Freeman and say, how do you not keep that guy in your uniform for the rest of his career? Uh, but the thing is, there is a business side of this. And, and if, if you're Alex Anthopoulos, if you're any general manager in baseball, that's the really only the side, the only side that you can look at. That's the realistic nature of, of what you're facing is the business side of this because your job is to win. And if you don't win, you're going to be out of there. And I think you have to toss uh, nostalgia aside. I think you have to throw fandom aside. It's not easy to do. But I think given the circumstances that were there, I think this was a move that they had to make because when it came down to it, you had the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Braves. You had one team that was likely going to land Freddie Freeman, one team that was likely going to trade for Matt Olson, and the other team was going to be left out in the cold. And the Braves couldn't – they don't want to get into a bidding war uh, with those two franchises. While the Braves aren't a poor franchise by any means, I don't think they can spend with, with what the Yankees and the Dodgers are spending. Uh, so I, I think they had to make a move because they had to have a first baseman. This was a game of musical chairs. They don't want to be left without a seat. Um, I think if you go back to the off season going into the 2021 season, uh, there was not a contract extension for Freddie Freeman. That surprised all of us. I think that surprised Freddie. I know it surprised me. Um, I think that surprised uh, the fan base. And for whatever reason, that contract extension didn't come. And I think we all felt all along that going into 2022, they'd get this thing worked out. But looking at the, the, the terms of the contract that Freddie signed with the Dodgers, it seems to me the sixth year was the sticking point. And the Braves just weren't going to do that. Uh, I know that you can say whatever you want about Freddie Freeman, one of the best players I've ever seen in, in, in 11 seasons of broadcasting baseball at the major league level. They just weren't going to go to a six-year deal with a 32-year-old guy. Um, they tried for four and five years. That didn't work out. Freddie didn't come off of that. 
if you want to translate that into Freddie just not wanting to come back to Atlanta, you're free to do so. If you are if you just want to translate that into Freddie saying, look, I need this is my last shot to get one big contract, I need to do it, you can do that as well. Whatever the reason is, in my opinion, it's not important. He wanted a sixth year. The Braves couldn't facilitate that, so they had to make a move. And I think striking when they did to get Matt Olson, a guy who is very similar to Freddie Freeman, a guy who, in my opinion, is a top – three or four first basemen in Major League Baseball. Um, I think, and, and, and a guy who's four and a half years younger than Freddie Freeman, I think this is a brilliant move. This is a move that took all, all sorts of, of guts to make. And, and Alex Antopoulos did that. And I think for any fan who might be questioning that, you've got, to, you've, get, you've got to look at his resume and see that in four seasons as, as the GM in Atlanta, he's got four division titles and a World Series championship. So as tough as it is to part ways with, with Freddie Freeman, Trust me, no one hates that more than I do. Uh, but that's the nature of this and the business side of this reared its head. And I think the Braves did the best that they could, given the circumstances they were up against. And, and Ben, is the cautionary tale Albert Pujols with the, the transition from St. Louis to the Angels? I mean, Cardinals fans were angry to see him leave, but the production fell off almost immediately when he got to the West Coast when he was 32, 33, 34, and beyond. It's definitely a guy who comes to mind. And, and look, it's a little bit different from the standpoint of the contract length was different for Albert Pools. Albert was coming off of that age 31 season where they won the World Series with the Cardinals in 2011, and he gets a 10-year deal uh, with, with the Angels. And it, certainly that showed other teams around Major League Baseball that you don't want to give that kind of a deal to a 31-year-old. You want to give a 10-year deal to a 26-year-old, 23-year-old, have at it. That's probably a good decision. But the game is full of first basemen who, after their age 32, 33 season, saw their numbers fall off. Albert Pujols is a great example of that. Joey Votto is a great example of that. Miguel Cabrera is a great example of that. All three of those first basemen, once they got to 32, 33 years old, still viable, still good, still having terrific careers, but not the dynamic player that they were. And uh, it, it's, it would be very easy to get into the nostalgia of that and say, well, Albert Pujols has always been a Cardinal or, uh, you know, Joey Votto has always been a red or Freddie Freeman always, has always been a brave and, and really cost your, your organization, uh, you know, four or five more years of, of being really productive. If you're not able to make the right decision, I think when it came to the Braves, that was definitely a part of it, but they also knew that that at, whatever happened at first base was going to be the first domino to fall right. and they had other needs and they couldn't address those needs until they knew exactly how much money they're going to be devoting to first base. And once they got Olsen, instead of Freddie Freeman, they were able to get Eddie Rosario, which they needed a left-handed hitting outfielder. They were able to get Colin McHugh because they needed to add a piece of that bullpen. And I think they still want to go after another outfielder and probably even another starting pitcher. And this allowed that to happen. So I think that's a good point that you bring up with Albert Pujols. I think the game has, has seen multiple first basemen, multiple guys that, that have put up big-time numbers that once they get into age 33, age 34, the numbers start to fall off. Are and or should the Braves be the favorite in the National League? I think so. I, I definitely think so. I, look, the, the Mets have, have made a lot of big moves, and I, yep. I've seen this so many years. In, <laughs> in this is my 12th season coming up where the, the off-season World Series title goes to the New York Mets, and then we get into the regular season, and it just doesn't pan out for them. I'm not saying that, that this, this team isn't really good. I think they're going to be a good bunch. Um, I don't want to take anything away from Max Scherzer, but Max Scherzer doesn't scare me like he does, like he did three, four years ago. He just doesn't. Um, and, and, and giving that guy $43 million a year for three years and then a player option after that for a guy who's 37, 38 years old, whatever he is, that, that's, I don't know, that, that, that has the potential to become a reckless deal. And maybe it works out for them. I don't know. I just know that they're desperate. They're spending lots of money. And spending lots of money can be a good thing, but it doesn't guarantee anything. That's right. and, and given that the Braves lose Freddie but still have so many guys back from last year, a team that won the World Series without Ronald Acuna, uh, I think the Braves are definitely the team to beat, not only in the division but in the league as well. 30 seconds left. We know that sometimes a World Series hangover can happen. Does that apply to, a, to an announcer? I don't think so. I, I, I think it, to me it's easy to separate these things. Um, you know, I, I'm so excited for this season because this team is entirely new. It's, it's different. They're going to have their own path, and while some of the cast members might be the same, uh, they're going to have their own path, their own journey, and I'm excited to, to bring that to our listeners every single night. And I know this much. Uh, I, I, doing what we did last year is the most fun I've ever had in my life, and I can't wait to do it again at some point. 